Good. Let's let's start the last. Uh, so we are happy to uh, welcome as the last speaker Jiang Yong Zhang, is a professor at uh, Hong Kong University. Uh, her group is studying uh, magnetotransport and optical properties of 3D TIs and also uh, transition metal like uh, echogenides. And today she will present her some past work on uh, proximity effects between uh, superconductor and uh, 3D topological insulator. So we are listening to you. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, first, I just like to thank the organizer of this conference uh, who gave me this opportunity to introduce some of our past works uh, on superconducting proximity effect in topological insulator and also uh, superconductor uh, hybrid structures. Okay. I'm from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. This is our uh, kind of uh, campus view, so uh, yeah, quite nice view. So before I start, I would like to first acknowledge my collaborators uh, in this work. It's from the experimental side. Uh, it's uh, we also are collaborating with uh, South Tech Professor Hong Taufer, and uh, for the series simulation is work carried out by my colleagues, uh, Professor Vic uh, Law School. And financial support is from the both Hong Kong uh, government and also uh, mainland uh, National Science Foundation. <clears throat> so this would be the outline of today's uh, talk. We will give a very brief introduction and then we'll introduce our device structure and then uh, our major result, both experimentally and numerical simulations. And you will see that we, we have very good uh, kind of uh, uh, agreement between experiment and also uh, simulations uh, in which we can distinguish surface state associated uh, kind of uh, superconducting proximity effect and also uh, uh, identify the bulk state associated features. So the interest to study superconducting pro uh, proximity effect is uh, begins with uh, this kind of theoretical uh, work that once we have S wave uh, superconductor uh, through the proximity effect, we can induce a uh, P wave uh, superconducting state in topological insulators, which can kind of uh, host uh, Marana fermion at uh, its vortex. Okay. So, uh, and there are numerous kind of uh, studies, uh, both in transport study and also uh, many other uh, techniques to study this uh, hybrid uh, TI and uh, superconduct uh, uh, hybrid structures. Okay, and also uh, in transport, you can observe uh, many interesting features uh, like plateaus and uh, zero bias peak and essential and more recently, and also uh, this work still uh, going on uh, with uh, different aspect as well. But the problem is that uh, there is many possibilities uh, to explain uh, the experimental observed uh, features. Okay, and so uh, to identify exact physics origin, which is uh, still uh, quite challenging, and also to di distinguish uh, topological surface state related proximity effect and also uh, and, and bulk uh, state. Uh, it's also very important, okay. Um, so in this uh, work, we use a 3D topological insulator between selenite, which is a, a kind of layered crystal, and uh, which is known as a, a topological insulator as a surface state, okay. Uh, drag point about 270 MeV uh, below bulk uh, gap, okay. And the super, conductor we employ to use is also a layered crystal, which is a 2H now being disalinite. Okay. And uh, it has a transition, uh, superconducting transition temperature about seven uh, Kelvin. Okay. So basically we just uh, acquire a commercially available kind of a bulk crystal of these both materials. And then we uh, use a, a mechanical exfoliation uh, method to get uh, now being that selenite uh, flakes and also business uh, selenite flakes. And then uh, through the dry transfer kind of technique, and we build uh, a junction. Okay, so uh, uh, lower now being that in, in this device, uh, now being that selenite flake uh, is at the bottom, and uh, 
basement selenite flake is on top. So the overlapping area is highlighted by this uh, purple uh, dashed uh, rectangle. Okay. So basically, if you look at the cross section, uh, the structure, uh, device structure is like this. Okay. So the with the super. Once the temperatures are below the knobbing uh, selenite uh, TC, and uh, then we will have a superconductor at the bottom, and then uh, 3D TI on top. So the proximity effect can induce uh, both uh, superconductivity for the surface state and also uh, the bulk state. So um, before we uh, measure this device, we also uh, did some transport measurement for the this selenite plate and we uh, can observe uh, this uh, Schopenhauer that has oscillation and uh, from the angle dependence we know it has 2D nature and uh, then uh, from the fine diagram we know it comes from surface state so more importantly from this SDH oscillation we can determine the where the Fermi level lies for our uh, business selenite flakes okay which is uh, determined about 270 milli electron volts above uh, Dirac point and uh, which is just uh, at the uh, minimum of uh, uh, bulk conduction band uh, for business selenite as well. Okay. And so this uh, is a uh, uh, temperature dependent uh, resistance uh, measurement uh, for this uh, device. Okay, so uh, for the Kind of large temperature range uh, for the, this uh, lab figure, we can see that uh, there is a sharp resistance drop uh, occur at about seven uh, Kelvin, which is corresponding to uh, now being by selenite uh, superconducting transition. And more interestingly, is that approaching two Kelvin, okay, we, we seem to see another uh, resistance drop. Uh, so we can transfer the device to the dilution fridge. Okay, uh, our small dilution fridge can only work between uh, four Kelvin uh, down to one hundred uh, milli Kelvin. Okay, so uh, so the, uh, for the right panel, we can only see the RT uh, in this uh, narrow kind of a temperature range, and we can see that indeed uh, below two Kelvin, uh, we can see another. Uh, Big resistance drop. Okay, so which we believe is corresponding to the superconducting uh, proximity induced the superconductivity in bismuth selenite. Okay, and by applying a, a magnetic field, of course, uh, we can see this uh, transition temperature is just moving to the lower uh, temperature. And then if we look at the um, magneto resistance. Uh, Dependence, okay, uh, on the field of magnetic field applied, we can also see the two uh, features corresponding to the uh, RT feature. Okay, so when the temperature is lower, we can see a sharp dip around the uh, zero Tesla, and uh, but uh, we can also see another kind of a valley, okay, which is in a larger uh, kind of uh, magnetic field uh, range. So basically we can determine two uh, critical uh, magnetic field uh, which is corresponding uh, the two transition uh, temperature. Okay. So in order to have more kind of understanding about this uh, superconducting proximity effect, we carry out the differential conductance spectra Kind of a measurement okay, across this uh, now being diselenite and bismuth selenide uh, junction. Okay. And this uh, is a uh, DIDV versus uh, voltage uh, applied kind of a spectra. And we can see that there are two uh, striking features. One is a uh, kind of conductance plateau. Okay. So this curve are offset just for clarity. So uh, there is a conductance plateau which. Uh, occurs okay uh start well uh, at four Kelvin we can we can see plateau only but once uh, the temperature decreases uh to two Kelvin and below uh there is a new feature coming out which is a zero bias uh, kind of a conductance uh, peak okay so this uh, this has two distinguished feature and uh, one of 
corresponding to the uh, second transition temperature um, to Kelvin. Another, uh, this plateau, uh, we believe corresponding to the uh, high transition temperature, which is close to the uh, now being disalinized superconducting transition temperature. So for the time being, let's focus on the plateau first. <clears throat> so we see uh, the, as the temperature kind of uh, increase from the 0.5 Kelvin, this uh, uh, plateau width is actually uh, decreasing. And however, the, in, the magnitude of the plateau uh, doesn't change very much. Okay. Um, so if we plot uh, the temperature dependence of the width of this uh, conductance plateau, uh, which shown as this uh, black dots, and also uh, together we plot uh, the from BCS theory plot uh, now being disalinized kind of a, a gap dependence on the temperature uh, with uh, superconducting transition temperature assumed at seven, uh, seven Kelvin, which is this uh, right curve. And we can see that our data um, kind of uh, uh, fade to a lower kind of transition temperature. Okay, so this purple line, dashed line is corresponding to the TC of 6.5 Kelvin and this uh, uh, green one is uh, 6 Kelvin. Okay, so uh, this uh, plateau kind of corresponding to the, we believe, okay, is corresponding uh, to the uh, superconducting proximity uh, effect to surface state. Uh, because uh, surface state wave function is more kind of localized at the interface, so it's expected to have a stronger kind of uh, influence uh, by uh, superconducting transition of the uh, now being disalinite. So, um, and later I will show you that from our uh, theoretical simulation, and indeed uh, this plateau uh, is coming from the surface state. And now if we uh, closely examine the zero bias uh, conducting, uh, conductance peak, okay, uh, which occurs below the two Kelvin, and uh, then we find that uh, its peak intensity, okay, uh, is actually decreased with increasing temperature. And uh, its peak width, okay, uh, is also, is increased with the increase of temperature. So this is quite, uh, kind of interesting uh, phenomena, which is uh, quite different from uh, other, uh, from, from the plateau kind of situation. So the plateau situation with, is decreased with increase in temperature. But here the uh, peak, a peak width is uh, um, increased with increased temperature. So implying that it's kind of thermal uh, effect, okay. Um, And the width itself is much less than the plateau width. Okay, plateau width is in a kind of a order of two milli uh, volt, which is a uh, fairly close to the uh, in the same order of magnitude of a superconducting gap of now being disalinite. But for the plateau, uh, it's kind of order of magnitude smaller. It's only uh, around uh, on one three uh, milli volt at uh, 0.1 Kelvin, and it, it, it also doesn't change too much uh, below one Kelvin and start to uh, increase uh, sharply at above uh, one Kelvin. Okay. So, um, and then we believe that um, this, because if we associate the plateau to the surface state and then this uh, uh, zero bias uh, kind of uh, peak, uh, may associate it with the bulk state, okay. Um, so to kind of uh, really understand the physical origin of these two features, we observed experimentally and we did a numerical simulation and the simulation system is uh, kind of mimic our experiment. Okay, so uh, this uh, uh, is a case when uh, we uh, assume the temperature is smaller than the second uh, superconducting transition temperature and the superconductor is uh, kind of uh, uh, 
connected with the normal metal and uh, the topological insulator is semi-infinite. Okay, so partially uh, become superconducting and uh, partially it's a normal kind of a topological uh, insulator. So when the current goes through this uh, structure, we will expect to have a uh, um, energy reflection for both surface state, okay, from normal surface state to superconducting surface state, and from normal bulk state to the superconducting uh, bulk state. And so we can actually uh, uh, calculate the DIDV uh, spectra, okay, and uh, to see uh, based uh, on the energy reflection. Okay, so this uh, is a calculated uh, result. And in this uh, case, we assume that a uh, Fermi level uh, is uh, at 274 milli electron volt. It just uh, uh, touch the bottom of the conduct bulk conduction band of bismuth selenide. Okay, so this uh, is the surface state, and this is a bulk uh, conduction band, and it's a bulk uh, valence band. And so the uh, differential conductance uh, calculated kind of reproduce what we observed in the experiment, that is a, a zero bias plateau and also a zero bias uh, peak, uh, just like what we observed in the experiment. And in this uh, simulation, we can also change the number of the uh, quantum layer, that is the thickness of the business uh, selenide uh, sample. Okay, uh, as uh, we change the number of quantum layers, and we can see the conductance plateau doesn't change. But however, the zero bias uh, peak is become stronger when the layer number is increased. Okay. Um, so this uh, kind of layer dependence of the zero bias peak then, and also layer independence of the plateau kind of indicate that plateau is coming from surface state. And this zero bias peak is associated with the uh, uh, bulk state because it really depends on the bulk layer kind of a, a thickness. And of course, we can also uh, further verify just by changing the uh, location of the Fermi level. Okay, so we can adjust in the simulation uh, where the Fermi level lies if we adjust it uh, within the bulk gap. And in this case, uh, from the simulation, we can only see the uh, conductance plateau, okay, and uh, it doesn't depend on the uh, quantical layer number of bismuth selenide, and so this uh, indicates that this plateau indeed coming from the uh, superconducting proximity effect uh, to the topological surface state, and we can also by changing the tight bending kind of parameter make this bismuth selenide become trivial. So there's no surface state. And then uh, we just only look at the uh, case where the Fermi level just lies at the bottom of the conduction band. And in this case, uh, the simulated uh, differential conductance spectra just shows uh, a sharp peak. Okay. Um, so this uh, further simulation just uh, indicating that plateau are indeed conductance plateau are indeed associated with the surface state and uh, this uh, zero bias peak is associated with the uh, bulk state superconducting proximity effect. And we can also uh, estimate the gap, okay, induced uh, superconducting gap um, by kind of a plot uh, the spectral uh, dependence, okay. Um, spectral function of the bismuth uh, kind of uh, selenide. So qualitatively, uh, at normal state, okay, uh, if you look at the uh, Fermi level, uh, the energy spectrum at Fermi level, uh, it will have two circles. One is associated with surface state, okay. Another, which is this uh, uh, larger uh, circle, and another associated with the bulk state, which is this small uh, circle. But once the uh, superconducting proximity effect uh, is take action, and then the spiking, superconducting gap will start to form, okay? And then uh, for the bulk state, uh, this gap will be much smaller uh, than the 
surface state. Okay. And uh, from this uh, simulation, uh, we can uh, kind of estimate the surface state induced the superconducting gap to the surface state is in the kind of about 70% of the uh, gap of an alkene disalinide. Uh, but for the bulk gap, which is only about 10% of that now being uh, disalinide. Okay. So this uh, uh, sharp kind of uh, um, zero bias peak is really uh, associated with a weak kind of superconducting uh, proximity effect and a small uh, induced uh, superconducting gap. Okay. Um, So we can um, further uh, study the effect of the Fermi level kind of uh, location. Okay, so if we uh, put the Fermi level deep into the bulk conduction band, okay, in this case, uh, the Fermi circle uh, between the bulk state and the surface state uh, have a kind of a similar uh, size, and then the differential conductance uh, spectra will be completely different. And we can see the, the sharp zero bias peak has significantly uh, broadened, okay, uh, almost at the, at the same width as uh, the conductance uh, plateau. Okay. And so this uh, sharp kind of uh, conductance peak is really uh, depends on where the Fermi level uh, is located uh, both gap. And uh, the experimental observation would also depends on the interface quality. Okay. Uh, here we can simulate okay, with different degree kind of uh, interface uh, transparency. And uh, we, when the interface is uh, very transparent, okay, uh, we produce a simulation, produce a result similar to the experiment. But if we uh, reduce the interface transparency, and then the spectra will also uh, change. When the transparency is low, basically the zero bias peak will be completely uh, surprised. And also the plateau will become uh, much narrow, okay, and uh, less uh, sharp. Okay, so uh, this uh, kind of indicate that uh, for our device, okay, uh, our the interface is uh, very transparent, okay, which enable us to observe uh, these two distinguished uh, features associated with the surface state and the bulk state. And we can also uh, kind of uh, try to explain the uh, zero bias peak kind of a broadening effect, okay. And we think it's a, a thermal effect. So, uh, so in this uh, simulation, uh, the, we use a parameter which is uh, uh, thermal energy, uh, the ratio between thermal energy and the superconducting gap. Okay, so when this uh, parameter uh, increases, and means the thermal thermal effect uh, is also uh, increases. And we can see that uh, zero bias peak uh, intensity is decreased, and uh, the peak width is also uh, become broadened. Okay, as uh, it is uh, plotted here. So the uh, yellow, so sorry, the blue uh, shows the red, the width. Okay, and the black one uh, shows the intensity. Okay, so as a uh, temperature increases, that is this ratio, alpha T will increase. Um, and then uh, the intensity decrease and uh, the peak width uh, broadens. Okay, so this um, is also uh, in a very good uh, agreement uh, with uh, experiment. Okay, so this is what we observed, a change of the width and uh, a change of the intensity, which is different from the case of the plateau, because uh, the gap associated with the surface state is quite large, much larger than the uh, thermal energy. 
so uh, we won't observe a thermal effect. But the, uh, the gap induced to the bulk state is uh, much smaller than that of surface state, which uh, the thermal effect become uh, important. Okay, so that's how we can observe uh, the thermal effect of the zero bios peak. And so to summarize, uh, we can simultaneously uh, we can simultaneously observe in the experiment a conductance plateau and a, a zero bounce peak okay, um, in a differential uh, kind of a conductance uh, spectrum. Um, and this, those features can be very well produced, okay, qualitatively in agreement with a, a theoretical kind of a, a simulation. And uh, from the theoretical simulation and also from the plateau weights and the uh, zero bias peak weights, we can actually estimate the induced the superconducting gap. Okay. Uh, first identify that plateau is indeed from the surface state and the zero bias peak uh, is uh, from the bulk state, but the, the corresponding, the corresponding uh, superconducting gap has a kind of order magnitude difference. Okay, so this uh, kind of uh, experiment shows that it is um, possible, okay, indeed to use a uh, superconducting proximity effect to induce PV superconducting um, state in the surface state of 3D topological uh, insulator. But then uh, how we can actually utilize this system is would be uh, for the future work. Okay, so Thank you uh, for your attention. Good. Thank you very much, Shenlong. Um, so the discussion now is open. So um, we already have one question. I will switch to also for the chat. So no hand raised. So we have one simple question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, I wanted to ask whether uh, finally this uh, zero conductance peak right, is, excuse me. Yeah. Did I didn't I... see you raise your hand, so I was reading uh, another one, but it's okay, just go on. Uh, I raised my hand actually. I see it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, should I continue? Yes, please. Yeah, so, uh, so um, I wanted to ask whether um, uh, this zero conductance peak has any relation at all to Andrei reflection or is some other origin? Oh, it's due to the Andrei reflection. It's just, uh, it's Andrei reflection from this bulk state. The bulk state. Yes. And also the plateau is Andrei reflection from uh, the uh, surface state? Yes. Yeah, yeah right. I see. I see. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, um, and yeah, there is a question in the Q and A. Why so is the why... this drop is only a fraction of the R? Yeah, as that is mainly because of the device uh, structure. Okay, so if you look at our uh, device structure, we have series resistance. Uh, let me share the screen. Share the screen again. Okay, so um, in fact, oops. Yeah, if you look at our device structure, there is three part of the resistance. Uh, one is from the business selenide flake. Another is from now being a disalonide, and the third part is a interface part. Okay, so um, what we actually measure the resistance in the RT kind of measurement is not just the uh, superconducting part; it also contains the series resistance uh, input, bismuth okay. selenide uh, kind of flake. So that is a why it won't uh, really kind of drop uh, to the uh, zero resistance. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? So I don't see, or maybe. Yes, we have a question from Juan Sierra. Can you please unmute your microphone? 
thank you for the talk. So I, I have a curiosity regarding the <clears throat> these devices. Mm -hmm. So when you do the stacking of these uh, two materials, mm -hmm. uh, so you, you you just show that you have a clean interface. So do you do some treatments on an alien for cleaning this interface or? No, uh, it just we we did it in a glove box. Okay, I, this is this was also my, my my second question. Okay, okay, just to in a controlled environment. Okay. Yeah, we in a controlled environment, but even in a controlled environment, you cannot always get very transparent. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there other questions? I don't see other question. Maybe I can ask or comment. Just ask a question about. So you show us initially, uh, Shumnikov the association of your center. Mm. Yeah. And as far as I remember, your wrote it's like 60 nanometer thick. Yes. So normally, because they are highly doped, this bismuth selenide uh, system, so you have a massive amount of bulk carriers. And, well, it's, uh, and it's you should have band. like like three band yeah. transport with a, a really large density of bulk carriers. So um, my question is, uh, if you show again this uh, shimmick of the association, okay. it looks like single band. So I have two points. So it looks like single band. And second, it's a very large carrier density. So um, in the end, when you uh, look at the Lando level fans, it's a very uh, large, it's a large end limit. So here, this, this looks like really a single band. And then if I look at this uh, curve on the upper right side, mm -hmm. uh, if I understand what you say, you say that uh, you extrapolate from your uh, uh, large end data to uh, n equals zero and you find that it's a, a one half value and you attribute this to a, a topological surface state. Yes, yeah, so there are two, two, uh, two reasons why is this one uh, is extrapolated to the negative uh, on five. Another is this angle dependence. Uh, if we can change the magnetic field uh, directly magnetic to the sample surface and uh, it shows this oscillation is has kind of a two dimensional nature. It depends on the input. Bell carriers uh, can input. also show this kind of uh, angular dependence. Sorry? Bell carriers can also show this kind of angular dependence because you can have a, a, a magnetic. No, length. Both, both carrier would not have a, will have an angle dependence. So just to finish, so very shortly, we can see the chat in the discussion afterwards. So it, it yeah. looks like a single band. S single band. You have only one type of carrier here in this data. You oh, have yeah. A very, yes. very uh, regular yeah. increase. Of, yeah. huh? Yes. And from this, you say, OK, you, are, you, are, you have uh, surface states, but your Fermi energy is at 217 mEV. So it's clearly in the uh, conduction band. So you should have yeah. also. Uh, we have an electron, yeah, we, uh, we only have electron conduction here, but why is in the surface state, why is in the bulk state? Okay. But it's, as a Fermi level is not deep in the bulk conduction band, it's just at the very bottom of the bulk conduction band. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we can, are there other questions from the attendants? I don't see any in case you want to discuss with our speaker. So there will be the lunch pause, but of course you can meet. So you have the link in the, in the chat. You can meet uh, Professor Wang in uh, the meeting room. And okay, so I, I thank you again for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you.